Welcome to this Call 1 2024-2025 Financial Assistance Workshop. My name is Alison Brady. I'm the Project Support Officer for the Grants and Funding Unit. The purpose of the workshop is to inform you about the funding available, the new grant management system and the associated application process. The presentation will cover the following. General Financial Assistance Guidance, Summary of the Programmes, Application EGMS Guidance, procurement guidance and where to get additional help. So general financial assistance guidance. Mary Morn and Dine District Council invite applications for financial assistance for the community and voluntary sector. The private sector is welcome to apply for the themes of tourism events and arts and culture projects. All projects must take place between the 1st of April 2024 and the end date given in the theme guidance notes. For most themes, the maximum end date is 18th of March 2025. However, the following themes have different end dates. Community summer schemes and sports programs, 31st of August 2024. Community events and festivals, 30th of September 2024. Good relations and PCSP, 31st of December 2024. Projects cannot be run past the maximum end date given in the guidance notes, as the respective letters of offer will only be valid within this time frame. The closing date for applications is 12 noon on Wednesday the 28th of February 2024. Applications should be completed on the electronic grant management system which can be found at nearymorndyndc.smartsimpleuk.com. The link to the Smart Simple system can also be found at the top of the Council's Grants and Funding page. As a side note, a link is available at the bottom of the page for the old grant management system. However, this is purely to facilitate claim submission for this financial year. Claims harvesting will stop on the 13th of March 2024 and all access will cease the 31st of March 2024. Late applications will not be possible or be considered. Points to consider before applying. Organisations in receipt of public funding must comply with all statutory obligations regarding the delivery and access of projects. Adequate insurance must be in place prior to the project taking place. Purchase of gifts and presentations to individuals are not eligible. Consideration will only be given to projects seeking funding from the Council that is between the minimum and maximum limit for each programme area. The new grant system will prevent you from asking over the maximum threshold available. Uh, however, if you're applying for community, or community events and festivals, please be aware that we cannot set it for the minimum limit of a thousand. It's only set to the ma two day maximum of £2,000. The Council will not accept retrospective applications, i.e. applications seeking funding for projects already started prior to the 1st of April 2024. The Council will only consider one application per organisation per programme area. <coughs> It is essential that applicants submit a copy of their annual audited accounts, independently examined accounts or income and expenditure accounts with the application. These should be the most recent accounts available for your organisation where possible. However, they must be dated within two years of the date of application to be eligible. One benefit of the new system is that you upload these documents along with your legal status documents, for example, constitution, to your organisation tab once each year, instead of uploading them to each application. This will be a bit of a time saver for the prolific appliers. I will elaborate on this in more detail later on in the presentation. The council will only pay the agreed sum against each original invoice whenever all relevant conditions have been met and bank statements evidencing expenditure have been submitted. Expenditure must go through your nominated account to be eligible for reimbursement. Own labour and hire of own facilities are not eligible items of expenditure. Insurance costs are only eligible items of expenditure if it relates to the project activity applied for. This is subject to council approval. Due to the new grant management system, we are having a revenue only call one. Capital grants and any outstanding revenue themes will follow in call two later in the year. We estimate call two will be released towards the end of March, start of April. Should you wish to be notified and haven't already done so, please email the grants and funding unit to have your email address added to the mailing list. The email address will be at the end of the presentation. It is also available on the grants and funding webpage. The private sector is welcome to apply for the following two themes. Tourism events. Below is an overview of what's available in the tourism events. Full details are found in the associated guidance notes. The threshold is £5,000 up to £15,000. 
The aim is to support events that attract visitors from outside the district, positively showcases the district, have total visitor numbers greater than 1,000 and have at least £15,000 of funding to deliver the event, excluding funds from this theme. Objectives, events must support the district becoming one of the premier tourism destinations, contribute to the four main themes of Council's tourism events programme, fit with the ERT tourism strategy and have the ability to deliver visitor spend. Key point, to be eligible, the event must have a minimum total event cost of £20,000. This covers the £15,000 spend prior funding, or spend prior to funding, and then £5,000 minimum funding award. So unlike previous years, Council will fund 100% of eligible invoices. So to claim the maximum available award, projects would need to demonstrate a minimum total cost of £30,000. £15,000 would come from their own funds and then £15,000 from the Tourism Events Fund. Arts and Culture Projects, threshold £2,000 to £10,000. The aim of this is to strengthen and support the development of our culture, arts and heritage sector, bringing them to life for residents and visitors. Objectives, projects must showcase in, er, must increase engagement in arts and culture activities, create outreach opportunities and help to positively showcase the district's arts, culture and heritage offering. Projects will also be considered that open up, animate and promote our historical sites to visitors and local residents and bring to life the myths, legends and stories of our district. Key points. Applicants who wish to apply for funding under this theme and tourism events for the same event or project will have to clearly demonstrate how their application differs in terms of project outcomes as linked to each theme. Please review the eligible expenditure as a few changes have been made. The following themes are open to the community and voluntary sector only. Community engagement. Threshold £500 up to £1,500. This is to improve community development and enhance community engagement outcomes. Objectives are to improve community development, enhance community engagement, build positive relations, help communities address local needs, assist communities to produce improved outcomes in their local areas. Key point, this theme has had changes made to eligible and ineligible items, so please review these prior to applying. Community events and festivals, threshold £500 up to £2,000 with one day event maximum of £1,000. The aim is to assist community groups in the delivery of small local festivals and events held between the 1st of April 2024 and the 30th of September 2024. The pre preference will be given to community events and festivals which run consecutively over two or more days and in fact to be eligible for the £2,000 you must be running over two or more consecutive days. You can't have a one day festival say for example May Day and then another day celebrating summer. You must be running side by side. Key points, applicants can once again apply to both the community events and festivals theme and the community summer schemes theme. Ineligible programmes for this theme are sports summer programmes, large scale events with an overall cost over £10,000 and events running between the 1st of October 2024 and the 18th of March 2025. A separate community events and festivals theme is anticipated later in the year, which will cover events in the second half of the year, including Christmas. Sports summer schemes should apply to the sports programmes theme and large scale events should apply to the tourism events theme. Good relations, threshold £500 to £1,500. Aim is to provide the delivery of projects aimed at improving good relations across the council area. The objective is to support projects that complement the council's good relations strategy, which identifies several key strategic priorities in meeting the good relation needs of the district. The applicant should aim to address one or more of the key priority themes as defined by the Executive Office under the Together Building a United Community Strategy 2013. Summary headings are our children and young people, our shared community, our safe community and our cultural expression. Maximum activity end date is the 31st of December 2024. Please pay attention to the eligible and ineligible expenditure as these have had some changes from previous years. Irish language, threshold £500 to £3,000. This is the same as in previous years. The aim is to support the Irish language community renewal and development or positively engage in the Irish language. Objectives, projects that encourage Irish language community capacity building, mentoring and volunteering. It's envisaged that this scheme will inspire better developed 
Irish language communities to partner with newer developing Irish language communities to share resources and build better networks and encourage volunteering or community engagement projects to build positive relations, raise awareness and understanding, address perceptions and promote respect for the Irish language. Minority Communities Fund, £500 up to £1,000. There's been no changes in this from last year. So the aim is to support Protestant, Unionist and Loyalist focused community projects or to support Black, Minority, Ethnic focused community projects. Objectives are to support projects which fit into one of the two following themes. One, cultural ex expression for projects that positively promote minority community culture, tradition and identity or two, positively engaging minority communities for community engagement projects to build positive relations, raise awareness and understanding, address perceptions and promote respect for minority communities. PCSP Community Safety and Support, threshold £500 up to £2,000. Aim is to support the delivery of projects aimed at improving community safety across the district. The fund seeks to encourage local community-based organisations to address local community safety issues through innovative and appropriate local solutions. They fall into three main themes, antisocial behaviour, projects which prevent, reduce or address antisocial behaviour across the district, community safety support and vulnerability, projects which support vulnerable people or families and which address mental health, substance abuse, isolation and loneliness and general community safety, or confidence in policing, projects which will increase confidence in policing by developing and enhancing opportunities for engagement between local communities and the PSNI. The maximum activity date is the 31st of December 2024 and there's um, been changes to the eligible and ineligible items of expenditure so please check these um, in the guidance notes. <clears throat> Sports programmes, £500 up to £2,500. The purpose is to assist organisations to run sports programmes for young people over the summer period. You don't have to be a sports organisation to apply for this theme as long as you are delivering a sports focused summer scheme. The scheme should run for a minimum of five full days at five hours per day or ten half days at two and a half hours per day. Projects must increase and support the number of young people adopting and sustaining a sporting lifestyle and complement the Council's sports facility strategy. Key points, applicants should refer to the sports facility strategy in their application. Maximum project activity date is the 31st of August 2024 and there has been a change to the refreshments alliance. It's been capped at 25% of your total project budget. The following theme is for constituted community associations only. The applicant must meet the definition of a community association given in the guidance notes. Community summer schemes, threshold £500 to £1,000. Aim is to assist constituted community associations in the delivery of summer schemes. The purpose of this grant is to assist constituted community associations who run summer schemes for young people over the summer period. The same as sports programmes, the scheme should run for a minimum of five full days at five hours a day or ten half days at two and a half hours per day. Key points, all project activity must be completed no later than the 31st of August 2024. Admission fees for attractions are an eligible items of expenditure. Applicants can apply for this theme and the community events and festivals theme. So the guidance notes. Each theme has its own guidance notes available for download. Before applying, it is vital to read the guidance notes which provide the following information. An overview, overarching principles, theme criteria, which contains the aims, objectives and eligible and ineligible items of expenditure, the application process, including stage one basic eligibility, completing the application form, which contains question specific guidance, the assessment criteria, project appraisal and scoring, which constitutes stage two scoring, what happens next, appeals and then useful contacts and links to strategies. It's essential to read the theme criteria for each programme you're applying for and it is also highly recommended that you read the completing the application form section at least once prior to filling in your application form on the grant management system. Account registration. Applications must be completed online via the electronic grant management system. You can register for an account at nearymoreandyndc.smartsimpleuk.com as I've already mentioned, a link is available on the grants and funding page. And this is what the login page looks like now on our nice shiny new system. We have a lovely picture in the background. 
And to register onto the system, you just need to click register on the bottom left of the page as I've highlighted in the circle. You then complete your registration process. So you're given different registration options. Uh, when you first start off an account, you need to select what sort of organisation you represent from the options on the left hand side. This will later determine what documentation is required and your theme eligibility. So the organisation type will also determine what sort of declaration you have to sign at the end of the application. So for example, if you're registering as a sole trader, you will only have to complete one declaration signing rather than have the option of two signees and a witness as on the previous system. Once you've completed the registration process, you'll have this notification uh, informing you that you'll receive an email to complete your registration process. You must follow the link in the email to validate your email address and set up a password for your account. Otherwise, you will not be able to access funding opportunities. The new application landing page looks like this. You can update your contact details on my profile or the little pen icon in the top right. Upload your legal documents and accounts under organisation profile. Open themes or calls will show under funding opportunities. Draft applications will show in at the in progress box. Submitted applications will show in the under review box. Successful and unsuccessful applications will show in the completed applications box. Claim forms will show up under the draft reports. We're hoping in, in a few weeks to get reports changed to claims. Uh, but that's pending processing. Reverted claims will show up under revisions requested. Claims picked up for processing will show under review. And then paid claims will show up under completed reports. As you can see from the screenshot, you won't be able to apply for any financial assistance until you've uploaded your legal status documentation and accounting information. To upload your legal status documentation and most recent annual account, you need to click into Organisation Profile. Please remember to update your annual accounts as necessary before starting a new financial year's rounds of application. Once you click into the Organisation Profile, you'll be greeted with this page. You can drag and drop files or use the Browse Files tab to upload relevant documents and then to return to the dashboard by clicking on the Home button. Unlike the previous system, you only need to provide these details once and they will follow each theme application that you make. However, it is vital that you remember to update your financial records each financial year or you will fail basic eligibility. We will, of course, endeavour to remind you each call to do this. Also, if your constitution changes for whatever reason, please update your records accordingly. And likewise, please always keep the contact details up to date as well. Open funding opportunities will appear like this. You can search for specific themes in the search bar at the top. Guidance notes appear as hyperlinks. And then eligibility criteria are also available as well. Completing the application. Although the appearance is rather different from the previous system, all the questions are exactly the same, albeit without numbers. The one big exception is we will no longer be collecting organisation equality information. Instead, we are going to be collecting project participant information. So if you are successful, please bear this in mind for claim time. You may want to create anonymous feedback questionnaires for participants to collect this information. More detail will be provided to successful applicants in future claim submission training. There are a few other system differences which I will go into over the course of the following slides. Additional information is automatically displayed, however you can turn this off by clicking on the I at the top right hand corner. This new system is much more self-contained, so instead of emailing and communicating with the grants and funding and staff outside of the system, you can now communicate with us inside the system. And to do so, all you need to do is click on the double square icon on the top right hand corner or click on the notes tab on the far left hand column. This will open a notes window or a notes tab. New notes are created by clicking on the plus icon here. You can then type up your query and submit it. This will then generate a task for staff and we will respond within the system and you'll receive an email notification informing you that the message has been answered. You can then log in via the link or if you have this saved in your bookmarks, log into your account and go to the relevant application. 
All applications, as on the old system, will have a unique identification number. So all the call one applications are beginning with 2024, hyphen, and a unique four-digit number. So you'll know that that's your application for this year, and you'll be able to follow that through the system. So going forward, as I've mentioned, there'll be no need to email the grants and funding unit separately regarding anything to do with the applications or projects on the system. If all goes to plan, even reprofile and advance requests and submissions, etc. will all come through the system. However, this bit is still under development and we will, however, keep successful applicants updated as time goes on. So the general plan is instead of you emailing us, requesting a reprofile, we then attach a document to an email, you download it, fill it in, re-upload it, email it to us, we download it, and then upload it onto the system, it all comes and stays in the system. So it's all a lot tidier for yourselves and us as well. The following information applies to any table within the application form. So this could be your project expenditure table or your additional funders table. So when you click on enter key activities, a new window pops out. If you don't have an enter key activities button, you probably just need to click save draft at the bottom of the page first. If in doubt, read the additional information prompts, they usually keep you right. In the pop out window, you can enter the various aspects of your project and the number of participants involved. You can add additional rows as required. Once you click save, the table translates into your application and you can click the X at the top right of the window to close it and continue on with your application. And here you can see the table translated into your application form. In the key activities, we encourage you to provide enough detailed information that the panel could turn up to your event and know exactly what to expect. So, for example, instead of having art and craft as the activity, put painting or children's crafts creating paper flowers. You should also provide information on how the activity fits into your wider project and facilitates its delivery. The activity should link into your project description. The application process comprises of two stages. Stage 1, basic eligibility check. All of this stage must be passed in order for the application to be scored and passed to stage 2. The guidance notes highlight what is included in the basic eligibility. Generally, this is your legal status documentation, so for example your constitution, that your accounts are, are correct, um, if you require landowner permission, or if your project fits into the theme as well as applying within the eligible dates and budget. Stage two, full project appraisal and scoring. This is where the details and benefits of your project are assessed and scored. All applicants should review the assessment criteria provided under the assessment criteria, project appraisal and scoring section of the guidance notes. Questions are scored not to five. The Council's strategic priorities are laid out separately on the application form and you need to select which ones your project will meet. You will then need to detail in the text box below how your project will meet the priorities you have selected. To save your word count, you can use their number and refer to the priority you are discussing. For example, put in number three and then discuss how you will enhance, protect and promote our environment through your project. Other relevant strategies for the question of Council's strategic priorities include for sports programmes, applicants should refer to the Council's sports facility strategy. For tourism events, applicants should refer to the Council's tourism strategy. The Council strategies can be downloaded from the Council website, nearymorendown.org. Tips for completing the application. Thoroughly read sections 3 and 5 of your programme guidance notes before you're beginning your application. Each question will only be assessed on the information provided for that question, with the exception of the key activities question, which takes into account the aims and objectives provided in the project description. The information provided in these two questions will also be used to verify your project end date. Also, don't worry if you're going to repeat information, say, for example, from the project description, again, in your needs or needs establishment question. This is quite common and we can only score you on the information given in each box, so don't worry about repeating yourself. Don't assume the assessment panel has any prior knowledge of your group or project. Keep answers concise, relevant to the question being asked and the funding being sought. Activity information should be sufficiently detailed that an assessor in theory could turn up to participate in the activity and know exactly what to expect. Groups will be notified of the outcome of their financial assistance application around 12 weeks after the closing date, so roughly mid-May. 
Procurement guidelines. All successful projects must adhere to Council's procurement requirements. The below is an overview of our three main criteria. It's all based on total order value or the total invoice value from one single supplier. So for less than £250, a price check should be carried out either by checking different websites, calling for quotations or visiting similar shops and a record kept. This is exactly what you do every time you go to the supermarket and you're comparing different brands of produce. So, for example, you look at the same weight of butter and compare the price of the different brands. The next level up then is a value for money exercise for £250 up to £5,000. This, for this, you need to get a minimum of three written quotations, and these can be emailed, um, detailing the item or service specification or requirements, also any selection criteria to be used if it isn't in price alone, so for availability. You could uh, have the cheapest supplier around, but if they're not available when you're running your event, they're of no use to you. The sent emails, returned quotations and reason for selection should be kept on file and a procurement summary report completed. If your project is selected for full verification, the procurement summary report should be submitted as part of your claim. We will notify groups up front if you're selected for full verification. The next level then is £5,000 up to £30,000. This is a formal request for quotation. It's much more involved. It must be carried out and all associated documentation retained and submitted. You need a minimum of four full quotations for this, this one. And then full details of the process can be provided by the Grants and Funding Unit upon request. For any additional information, contact the Grants and Funding Unit either by email, programs unit at nmandd.org or phoning 0330-137-4040. Alternatively, their theme-specific help can be found under the Useful Contacts section of the guidance notes. And I would like to say a special thank you to the Ring Affiliate AOMB for the permission to use the images of their AOMB calendar competition entries in this presentation. For further information about the calendar competition or Ring Affiliate, visit www.visitmornmountains.co.uk. Thank you very much for your time.